So, maybe you've heard about Milo of Croton. He's that Greek dude who, when he was younger, he carried a calf up a mountain. As the calf grew, so he too grew. And this is generally used as an example for progressive overload. The weights get heavier and you adapt to the weights. But maybe you haven't heard about a different Milo. Milo of Crouton. This is the guy who ate more and more by training his metabolism to also progressively overload. And yes, I made this entire video just for that terrible joke, but there should be some good information for how to actually train your metabolism over time in order to eat more food. And metabolism is often something that is thought about as something that is out of our control. It's just, oh, this person has a fast metabolism. This person has a slow metabolism. Oh, I'm obese because I have a slow metabolism. Actually, in general, people who are obese have a faster metabolism. Yeah, a faster metabolism. Because often they're bigger, they're carrying around more weight. And even adjusted for that extra weight they often are burning more calories than you think. So if someone is obese, typically it's not because of their slow metabolism. So what are the various components of metabolism? Your, the underlying one is basal metabolic rate. So this is just how much energy you are expending doing nothing at all. So you're lying in bed, you're sleeping, how much energy is required to keep everything not dead? And this is mostly your brain, your liver, pancreas, internal organs per unit of weight are far more metabolically active than muscle tissue at rest. And fat tissue burns almost nothing at all. It burns a little bit to keep it existing, but not very much. It's basically just a site for storing energy. It doesn't burn much. The exception is brown fat, but maybe we'll get into that a little bit later. You also have the thermic effect of food. So when you eat food, it isn't just directly assimilated, ready to go. You have to spend energy to break it down. And protein is what takes the most energy. And this is why after you eat a high protein meal, you might feel a little bit hot. You might even start sweating. The meat sweats are a real thing. And so if you equate calories and one person is eating higher protein, typically they will lose more weight just because even if the calories in are equated, they are expending more energy to break that protein down. And so this is roughly around 25 to 30% of the energy in the protein. Carbs are around 10%. It depends on the exact type of carbohydrate and how processed the food is. Less processed foods takes more energy for your body to surprise, surprise, process it. And then fat is the lowest. Uh, it depends on the type of fat actually, but it's around two to 3% on average. So if you want to increase your metabolism, eat more protein or eat a higher percentage of your diet from protein. Is this gonna have a massive effect? Not really. Most people just equate this to roughly 10% on average, but maybe you can skew it up a little bit through eating a higher protein diet. There is also the thermic effect of exercise. So when you exercise, this is expending higher amounts of energy. So doing cardio increases your metabolic rate. Now there is a little bit of a compensation effect. So if you do cardio in the morning, some people tend to expend less energy later. And this is why typically cardio is not as good for fat loss as you would think based on the numbers because your body's gonna compensate somewhere else. That doesn't mean you shouldn't do cardio or that it's completely ineffective, but it's something you have to keep in mind when you're designing your training program. And finally, you have non-exercise activity thermogenesis or NEAT. Scientists love their acronyms. And this is basically, it's not your basal metabolic rate. It's not just lying there. It's not formal exercise. It's just stuff you do when you're yelling at the camera or just dating, just dating? Not just dating. My brain fucked that one up. Let me find the correct word that I was trying to use there. Gestating, carry a fetus in the womb from conception to birth. Not what I meant. Gesticulating, use gestures, especially dramatic ones, instead of speaking or to emphasize one's word. Bingo, there we go. And so neat is basically you're fidgeting or you're moving around. It's not formal exercise. It's not just your resting metabolic rate, your BMR. Uh, it is something else. And this is something that varies wildly from person to person. 
And so you, you know, there's some people who they're always, they're always moving, they're always fidgeting, they're always tapping their foot. This type of activity throughout the day could be hundreds or even thousands of calories worth of energy. Now, there are a variety of factors that go into your metabolic rate. Age is one. Your metabolism will typically slow a little bit as you age. Your overall body weight, which is why weight training is very, very good for metabolism. It's not that muscle burns a massive amount of calories. It's not like 50 calories per pound or something like that, as you might have heard. I think it's like eight or something like that, but it still adds up over time. And typically, if you have more muscle, you'll burn more calories, especially if you are more active. Environment is also a thing. If you're in a colder environment and you're shivering, that is movement. That requires energy. Also, just your general physical activity. If you're at home and you're sedentary and you're getting in like 300 steps a day, you are not going to have a fast metabolism because you're you haven't earned it. You haven't actually done anything to expend energy. And so metabolism is not just this thing that happens. It's something that you do. It is a part of your life and a lot of it is habitual. So getting in 6,000, 8,000, 10,000, 12,000 or more steps per day, that is metabolism. And that is something that is very much under your control. And so one of the better ways to train your metabolism is just to develop habits of being more active. If you're sitting around all day, you're not going to be burning a ton of calories. And any single action or activity is not going to make a tremendous difference. But in the long run, it definitely adds up. And if you have a desk job, see if you can get a standing desk or even a walking desk where you can actually just walk as you work. You might think that it will drastically or dramatically impact your work performance, but you get used to it and it might actually help you focus and concentrate. You can also be more high energy and purposely try to fidget. This one doesn't work as well just because, again, it's more habitual and it's going to be mediated by hormones and the nervous system anyway. So it's difficult to just say, hey, just fidget more, just move more and you'll burn more calories. A lot of this is genetic. Now, cardio is important, but I would say strength training is going to be at least as important in terms of bang for your buck. One study found that 11 minutes, three times per week for a grand total of 33 minutes, increased resting energy expenditure by 125 calories after half a year. That is huge. Another big one is eating protein for the aforementioned thermic effect of food. So you're going to be burning more calories to digest the protein. Plus, it's going to be more satiating, making it easier to stick in a deficit, assuming you're trying to lose fat. And then it's also going to be preserving your muscle mass better as well, meaning it's going to be preserving your metabolic rate in the long term. So protein really is worth prioritizing. And I would say get at least 0.8 grams per pound or roughly 1.6 grams per kilo. One important thing to note is that if you get too lean, typically your metabolic rate will go down. I've heard numerous stories of people who are in near contest condition and they used to be very, very active and and, and energetic. And then they're just like, not anymore because their body is trying to preserve energy. And especially if you're going down to below a thousand calories per day, you're really crash dieting your metabolism will likely crash with it. And so you're going to want to stay into a more modest deficit. And if you do go into a significant deficit, it's probably better to increase activity levels rather than decreasing energy intake to a huge degree. There's also some and somewhat mixed evidence that drinking water, especially cold water, could increase your metabolic rate presumably because your body has to actually heat it up to batch your body temperature. Again, however, the evidence is somewhat mixed, ranging from about 5 to up to 30%. I would say the greatest benefit of drinking more water is that it actually fills you up and it might cause you to eat less. You could, however, put some caffeine or coffee in that water, uh, which can increase your metabolic rate about 3 to 11 percent. Plus, it has an appetite suppressing effect, which means that if you intake less energy, you are going to lose more fat. Along that same line of thinking, sleep is huge. It has been shown to decrease your metabolic rate, 
but even more importantly, it can dysregulate your appetite and cause overeating. So anything that is going to cause you to overeat is not going to be great for your weight loss endeavors. One other important thing to note is that trying to maintain too lean of a physique definitely seems to suppress the metabolism pretty significantly. I've had clients who were trying to maintain a really, really shredded physique and, you know, they were binging and, and you know, yo-yo dieting and always trying to diet, but then going off their diet. And when they got into a consistent caloric surplus and they increased their activity levels and they started training with weights and they pushed up their strength and they built some muscle and now they're trying to gain weight, things just ended up a lot better overall. There are also more powerful stimulants that a lot of bodybuilders use to cut, which can increase your metabolic rate pretty damn significantly. However, in the extreme, this can definitely be fairly dangerous and I do not recommend it. This is part of the reason why I don't think you should go above around 20% body fat for a dude, because then when you cut down, it's that much more difficult. So metabolism is complicated. It's partly genetically mediated, partly habitual, partly psychological, partly hormonal, partly nervous system. There are a lot of factors that go into it. I think it's important to realize that there is no free lunch. It's not like you flick a switch or take some supplement and suddenly you are changing your metabolism or training it over time. A lot of it is going to be habitual and the choices that you make over time. Weight training is your best friend as well as a healthy diet, solid amounts of sleep, and just living an overall healthy lifestyle. And the word metabolism is often used with the implication that you will get something for nothing. Take this pill, it'll supercharge your metabolism, and you will be able to reach your physique goals without lifting a finger. That's not really how the real world works. Also consider the fact that you might not want a fast metabolism. For longevity, I would say a slower metabolism is actually going to be better. And a fast metabolism is usually compensated with appetite. So if someone has a fast metabolism, their appetite just goes up to reach it. And so now you're, you're burning more calories, but you're eating more calories. What you want to do is focus on getting in a surplus or a deficit depending on your goals. A lot of these metabolic adaptations will sort of sort themselves out in the long term. So if you think, oh, I want to lose fat, therefore I will expose myself to cold to get more brown fat, which burns more calories, which means I'll be in a bigger caloric deficit, which means I'll lose more fat. Well, there's a lot of jumps there, okay? So often the body will compensate for something in that chain of events, and you'll be at pretty much the same spot. So I don't necessarily recommend going out of your way to try to train or change or upgrade your metabolism. I would say take a more first principles based approach. Try to live a healthy lifestyle, lift weights, good sleep, mitigate and manage stress, all the basic stuff and your metabolism is pretty much going to sort itself out. Unless you have a specific medical condition, which is beyond the scope of this video. I don't think it's something you have to worry about at all. All right, that's all for this video. Definitely grab a copy of my book if you want to help support the ad-free content. Like, subscribe, share, all the YouTube stuff, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.